Yes, everything is possible with God. All over the world, every viewing center, lift your hand and nothing sing. Nothing is nothing impossible. impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His word. Hearken to the voice. Voice of God to me. Is there anything too hard? Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon His word. For everything, oh everything, yes, everything is possible. Put your hands together, give the Lord a shout of praise. And let's welcome our pastor, Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills, to Woo! preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for what you have done. Bless us, guide us, help us to receive and to be changed into another man by the word which is full of oil. Thank you for your blessing in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 it says the Lord sent a word into Jacob. So a word is about to be sent into you. And it has lighted upon Israel. The word lighted is another word for it is attacked. It has attacked Israel. Another word is overwhelmed Israel. Another word is it has made him fall. Yes. So the word is a heavy thing. And today the Lord is sending a word into you. And that word is going to overwhelm you Amen. and is going to attack you. Amen. How many would like the word of God to attack you? That's a good attack. Yes. There are some good attacks that you need to have. A lot of husbands would love their wives to attack them in a good way. Now, financial ascendancy Dominion and control of money. I believe that it is being given to you now. The God we are dealing with is not a God who is poor in any way. When you grow, when the Bible says you being evil know how to give good gifts. Giving somebody money it's not necessarily going to help the person. Are you with me? Yes. Giving somebody money is not necessarily going to help the person. Being able to receive money and able to have money is the first step to having money. Yes. It's being able to handle it. Like if I'm about to give you a snake, you should know how to handle the snake before I give it to you. Or you should prepare your cage, everything, before I give it to you. So it's very important that you prepare to handle the kind of wealth that God wants to give you. The kind of control over money. Now, if you control 10 cities, your control is small. If your ascendancy has reached 100 cities, your control is more. And your ascendancy has reached uh, 1,000. Last week I was giving you some barriers to give $1,000. You have never given $1,000 before. Like you have the control over 1,000. I give you. You have control over you can give 100. There will be no crisis in your life. You, you watch and see. To give $100 and you, there's a crisis. That day has changed in Jesus' name. $10,000. If you like, I can go to $5,000. 
I'm giving you targets. And all young people, I want you to listen. Some of the older ones that don't believe all these things. But when you are younger, you have more faith. But that's why we tell Christmas stories, uh, bedtime stories to children. They believe more things. So believe what I'm saying. It, you will see. It's going to change your life. Amen. Now, during the offering, I gave you one of the platforms from which you launch into financial ascendancy. And one of those is the favor you have towards people that are having meetings, taking decisions, plans, arrows, all these things. And very important. Now, in this service, one of the main things is tithing. There is no giving. There is nothing like tithing in the Bible. There is nothing. There is nowhere in Malachi 3, verse 8, 9, 10, and so on. He says, bring tithing. There is no form of giving which has so many things associated with it. All right? Yes. Talking about robbing people, robbing God, talking about curses, talking about opening windows of heaven, talking about rebuking devourers. There's no type of giving that is in that category. Yeah. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes. And you must see tithing as a very special and important key to any kind of financial ascendancy at the lowest level and the highest. Okay. You are entitled to Old Testament, whatever. Okay. You are entitled to believe what you believe. Don't read any testament. Don't, don't quote uh, every weapon form against me shall not prosper. And please, it's Old Testament things. And I don't want you to mention it. Uh, please, forget. Don't ever mention those words. Lord is my shepherd. It's very Old Testament. Lord is Isaiah, please. You wouldn't want to go into prophets since you are not into so stay out things. of that, please. So stay out of that. <laughs> <laughs> You see, when, <laughs> when we are hypocritical, we, we are see, caught when, very when quickly. We are hypocritical. Yes. We are caught very quickly. Yes. Now, bring yes. ye all the tithes. Now, bring ye all the tithes. That there may be and meat in my house. And test me. Again, there is nothing like that. So, tithing is the most unique form of giving. And nothing matches it, equals it, nothing compares with it in any form or fashion. So you must respect the concept of tithing because it is a master key to your prosperity and your tithe to God. Bring it to my house, not to the house of NPP or the house of NDC. Joe Biden in America, they say he has broken the records of fundraising. And Obama also broke the records. And they've raised more millions. People give millions to bring them into power. And in Ghana, it is the same. It is millions. People throw millions at the politics. Yeah. Yes. So, that there may be meat in my house. Because God's house is also very much at work. At least we are, we, are, we are at work. We have many things that we are doing. We have never done more things than we are doing now in the pandemic season. Yes. Last week, our, our, our trucks were put on a ship uh, going to uh, Europe. Yeah. You see the trucks. These are the trucks at the harbor. Healing Jesus campaign. Trucks. All of them loading. All, they are going to uh, the convoy. We have to weld. Because they are going to so many harbors on the way. We have to weld 
the containers that contain con, contain all the equipment and each truck do you want me to mention how many thousands euro it is to to ship one car just a, a small car how much more trucks and all this going you know and this is inside the ship you can see all right all right that's all you have yeah beautiful many and that's a ship that is on yeah and it's going to europe before it to come back to africa <laughs> because there's no ship from here to here look at the path that is going yeah so we have to pay because the border to nigeria is closed you cannot drive the security situation is closed you cannot drive you cannot drive you cannot drive to go to central africa you cannot drive from here there so thousands of euros the ship is now going to antwerp and is coming back are you with me yeah so the house of god also has a lot of things that we are doing you may not know what is going on but there are many things going on so many uh 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 what do you call it so many churches are being built so many things are being done children orphans day school as a ship our trucks being loaded at the Tema Harbor, which has been expanded by the government. You can see our Healing Jesus campaign tracks. Bring tithe into my storehouse. This is what it is. All those are new tracks that were bought. As you can see, they are welding it. You have to weld. Apart from locking, you have to weld it. Then we are praying that when we get to the port that we are going to, I will not tell you which port it is, but when we get to the final port, when we open, our things will still be there. Yes. So that's it. You have to, the, the ship is very, very huge. It's like uh, several floors high. And uh, our guys, that's a generator sitting on the back of the truck. Is that also? Yeah, that's a generator, the black thing you saw. So that's our team are uh, loading. You have to bring the trucks for some days to the harbor before they go through so many things. And exporting all the equipment. See, they say you are exporting this, you are exporting sound system, you are exporting this, exporting. And we have to explain we are not exporting. And then when they go to that place, say we are importing. Say we are not importing. We are coming to do something and then we will go. You know? So this is inside the ship. Yeah. That's inside the ship now. They are now inside. Beautiful. Bring ye all the tides. These are what we are using tides for. Yes. So you can see Healing Jesus campaign. These are new tracks because you know our old tracks broke down. So I did some fundraising. Some, a lot of people gave. And so you, those who have not seen the track, that is it. I sent you pictures. I hope they showed you. But that is it. Beautiful. All right? Beautiful. Amen. So bring you the tithe into the storehouse and my, my, my house can be called can be used, my, my house can have meat to do the work that we have to do. So I'm saying that people are doing campaigns, political campaigns, and they throw millions of dollars big time because they hope to reap from it. But if you give millions, after the person comes into power, he, he makes a call, sir, hi, it's Jack. Oh, Jack! <laughs> you want to see me? Yes, please. Then they bypass all the appointees and then they come there, and then that's it. Jack says that he needs oil contract, he needs gold contract, he needs bauxite contract, he needs this, he needs this, he needs that. It's equal to a textbook contract, it's chalk contract, contract to buy ice. They, they even give contract for ice. Ice uh, tra trailing, although there's no ice in Africa, you see they make contract for ice trailer in those days, early days. Yeah, one of the African countries gave a contract for ice skating or something. Well, I saw it, plows, plows. Which country was that? One of the countries, but not Ghana, not Ghana, but one of the countries. That's how come we don't have money. That's how we don't have money. Yeah, ice plows. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, ten things that happen every time you tithe in 
uh, my book on tithing. Okay, it's one of the heavily loaded books. Non-tithing Christians become poor and how tithing Christians can become rich. Now, when you tithe, you honor God. Yes. And honor, uh, you know, you must be careful with people, especially when it comes to respect. Respect. You know, when you trifle with respect, you can touch a very wrong nerve. There are some people that are very sensitive. You don't do that. What you did doesn't show respect. You know? And there are some people that are, you know, by whatever, they, when you touch that part, they don't mind a lot of things, but if you don't show the respect that you should show, you know? And also it depends on the culture. If you marry a man who is very much into respect based on his whatever, if you do certain things, if you raise your voice, you can't raise your voice. Some of you, the way you raise your voice won't work. You can't, you can't, you can't speak in a way. You can't even wave in your hand in a way. It doesn't work. As soon as you do that, it, you've gone off course. And you, you'll be surprised. You know, there are different types of people. There was this man who, who, who had been caught. There was some problem there. They were arrested for something. And they said they were going to lash, flog them. And the man said that, don't kill me. Because to whip me in the square, the public square, I can't take it. And he, I begged them to just kill him execute him because he cannot take the flogging. They said, no, no. That punishment for this one is the whipping. So, they lashed him. And after that, he targeted the man who (laughs) lashed him. Yes. Yes. He said, I told you to kill me. I prefer than to be beaten. So, the man got wind of it that he was about to was going to attack him. So he decided to go to another town about 400 kilometers. He, he moved there. The man who was beaten, he walked. Yes, he walked to that town. I told you, I said, I don't like that. <laughs> he walked to the, to the man's town. You've not heard me telling this story before. You've not heard this story before? Huh? <laughs> and when the man got there, he was in the town when he, re- he heard the news that this man has come there. He had walked. So this man walked to another town about 800 kilometers away. Far, I mean, the, the governor. He moved. The man walked it patiently. He walked to the next town. And he was there. This man was shocked to hear that 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 man had come to that. He has been seen in the town. And he moved to a third town. The man said, no problem. And he walked to that other town also. And he eventually, he went to the man's house and killed the governor. I said, I don't like what you are doing. I don't like that. Just kill me. So, I am saying that you should be careful with different things. There are some things that disturb people. And one of the things God doesn't like is respect that you give to somebody else. And that's why I said that those that honor me, I will honor them. And those that despise me, I will lightly esteem. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. All right? They that honor me, I will honor. If you show me honor, I will also honor you. If you despise me and you mock me, I will also lightly esteem you. It's something that God has said. It is my respect. And there are things you have to be careful about. When you cross a certain line, you have gone out into disrespect. So, let's take note of that. Number two, because we need to go fast today. It's just a short Bible lesson. Every time you tithe, you remember God. You do what? You remember God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11, it says, 
Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. You know, because when you finally get rewarded for all your hard work, the first things on your mind are the things around. Do you see? Yes. When our, our president came into power, he thanked people publicly. He even thanked pastors. Obviously, there must be pastors whom he was seeing in, in help, I mean, either supporting or praying for him or something. He thanked everybody. When President Obama became a president, he also thanked all the different people, do you see, that had contributed. Even the dogs, the dog in his house was thanked. But God was left out. Yes, God was left out. Why? Because, you see, when you work hard, you will not see God. Like, you don't see God. Like, I, I don't even see God here. I see you who are sitting in front here. And I see that I know that some people are watching me. But God, you don't see him. So he can easily be overlooked. And easily be forgotten. So when you come by millions, or you come by prosperity, or you start to see a certain level of financial ascendancy, you can easily forget about God. And so that is why in our church, okay, you must say and learn the practice. I remember, when you are giving your speech, I remember when I first this. I remember you did this. I remember, you must remember. Because I noticed that pattern when we are having meetings. You see, in the First Love Church, people did not just send offerings. They came in groups during Honor Your Prophet. And they came and some of them made speeches. The children, I'm talking about my children who I'm training. And said, I remember you called me and you said this. I remember when you preached about this. I remember and I remember and I remember. It's a very good thing. Because it's very dangerous to not remember things. And as you get bigger, you forget. That's why the other day I said, I said, to, I said to my bishops, I said that you are all my children. You are, I, I appointed you. I consecrated you. But I, said, I shouldn't say that. Because they should say that. They should say that. I shouldn't tell them. When I start telling you, it's like telling your wife to, I'm your head. Then already their marriage is not working. When you start saying I'm the head of the house. It means you are, you are, you are talking of something you've lost already. Yes. Something that's been overlooked. Yeah. Now, it says, unless when thou hast eaten and art full, you see, that's the whole problem. When you have eaten and art full and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy heads and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then what happens? Your heart is lifted up and thou forget. So people forget when they become proud. Read it for yourself. Then thy heart be lifted up. When your heart is lifted up, you forget things. Yes. Forgetting is a sign of pride. You wouldn't be where you are if it wasn't for somebody. When I see my mother, when I see my mother, and I look at my mother, my mother is over 80 years old. Sometimes tears come to my eyes. Because I remember what she has done for me. And her kindness, even a song we wrote recently, Let Me Stand Before You. 
I remember my, ma- my mother who understood everything I was doing. I don't know how. I don't know how she understood it. I remember. Yes. So, when your heart is lifted up, that's why you don't remember things. That's why you don't remember important things that you should remember. That you wouldn't be where you are. It's pride. When you see people walking around, it's like, oh yeah, I, I was, uh, you know, I'm also this. God called me and God sent me and God this and God that. It's true. But it is when you're, you are lifted up in your heart, that's when you forget little things. During the honor your prophet, one young man came and he said, you put your hand around me. And you said, you are going to be a great person. He said, he remembers that for all his life. But when you have eaten and you are full, do you see? And you are great. You don't remember. (laughs) Don't remember the arm, the hand, the times, the places. We sat, we talked. Don't remember anything. You don't have sweet memories. It's all, it's all a manifestation of pride. You want to know what is pride? Pride is manifested in your forgetting things. It shows that you are proud. That's why you forgot it. That's why it's not conscious on your head. I'm reading from the Bible. Thine heart be lifted up and thou forget. Oh, yes. If you sing a song, you should remember I wrote the song that people are enjoying as you sing it. I wrote it for you, for you to, to be famous. Oh, yes. And I made the song and produced it. <laughs> and if I, don't, if, I don't, if I don't select you, you will never sing it. Forever. Yes. There is, there is nothing about us that we should ever forget. The times that I have mentioned, for instance, Bishop Duncan Williams, Archbishop Duncan Williams, is a sign of humility. That's why people don't mention people's names. They don't want you to mention any name. <laughs> We don't want to remember it. We don't want to remember that part. We want to remember that we are, we are making it. We don't want to remember that part. So, remembering is a very important thing. And I, I can see, and the reason I wrote this book, Those Who Forget, was because I remember at that time, I saw that people, almost every rebellious person, which are orangus and unaratas are internally disloyal people. They are internal, they are going nowhere, but they are disloyal. They are either treacherous or deceptive or liars or traitors. Unarata, because rats are in the house. They are not out. Rangus are out. All of them have forgotten something important. That's why they are the way they are. I saw it. And that's why I wrote it. Because he was telling them that you are going to change into a horrible nation if you forget. And the forgetting will come when your heart is lifted up like that. You are are big. That's why you can be in this church and say certain things because you've forgotten. And that's why occasionally the Holy Spirit leads me to say, flex your muscles, exert authority, make changes, make moves. Many times God has told me, move. So that people will also understand where, where is where you, the chair you are sitting on, where is it coming from? So that you know. <laughs> yes. Make a change. Make moves. And people will see where, where the, the seat you are sitting on, where does it come from? And the 
opportunity you have. When I'm praying every day, we're going to preach. You hear those words. Lord, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. That's the only thing I see. Every day when I wake up, I see the class. It means I'm, I'm not dead. It means I'm not dead. When I see outside the cloud, sky, it means I'm not dead. Thank you for the opportunity. Lest thy heart be lifted up and thou forget. Hmm. Which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, again, these are not vocalized. They are not verbalized, but it is in your heart. They are internal sayings. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She said within herself, if I may touch the hem of his garment. There are always things we are saying within ourselves, but you have to become conscious of the things you are saying to yourself. Thou say in thine heart, my, my power. You see, you've not said it. You say, I'm hardworking. I, I am beautiful. That is why I am here. I deserve to be here. But you've not said it openly. Because you can't say it because it's unacceptable. You say it indirectly, vaguely, and ambiguously. But you are saying it. My power. My hard work. My whatever. Has gotten me this well. But. Thou. Shalt remember. If you have your book. Um, tithing. I'm in chapter. 20. <laughs> it's, it's a read along. <laughs> it's a read along. Chapter 20, verse number 2, point number 2. It's 10 points. <laughs> Am I not reading? Yes. The, but thou shalt remember the Lord. Thou shalt remember. Thou shalt remember. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power. So, those who have discovered planets... Many of them are searching for God. They cannot find God anywhere. Many have forgotten that God exists. They used to believe in God. Europe used to believe in God. There are thousands of cathedrals in France. They are not believing in God. They say that everything they used to believe in, they found a scientific explanation for. So anything we believe, will one day find a scientific explanation for it. So therefore, there is no God. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. God is not unrighteous to forget. Amen. Amen. Your work and labor of love. So forgetting your work, forgetting somebody's work and forgetting things is a form of unrighteousness. That's why the Bible says, God is not unrighteous to forget. So when you forget things that you are supposed to remember, you are practicing a form of unrighteousness. Are you with me? Yes. yes. So God himself doesn't forget what you've done. God himself. That's why all court cases, they take into account You've never done this before. You've never done this before. You've done this. You've done this. You've never done this. This is the first offender. This is the first time. This is the second time. This is the first time you've done, ever did, done this. They, all court cases take into account a lot of other things. That's what makes up justice. That's why a judge is not just simply, have you done this before? Or have you done this? Okay, go to prison. It's not like that. They are just about to execute a woman in America. And they said they've not executed a woman for 67 years. But they're going, to, they're going to execute her. Because there are so many things that go on before they take those decisions. And this particular woman, I think she killed somebody who was pregnant and removed the child and went to show the child that it was her child. And a lot of how, something, how, so they, are, they, are, they, are, they are going to execute her. 67 years, they've not done it. 
Because God, the, ju- justice sort of looks at many things before the final decision is taken. Are you with me? Yeah. I think she cut out the child. Yes. Of the woman. So, back to my scripture. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now, until you start believing that God is the author and the one who gives power to get wealth, you will never experience it. Yes. And I can't say that I've always believed that. I I will say that in recent years, I have come more to believe that God gives wealth. Even though I've always officially believed it. Like, as a fact I've known. Having principles and facts is different from something you believe. I can't say that I've always believed it. Yes. Like the way I believe it now. And I'm sure there's a higher way to believe it. But I, I would say that, I mean, by, by being a Christian and working with God over some years, I, I feel that uh, if God gives you power to get wealth, you will become wealthy. And you will not even be able to explain your wealth. And if he doesn't, you will not. You, you, you just never will be. That's, that's what I think. I think, well, I think when Jesus stood by the Sea of Galilee, and he said, cast your net. He was showing that he was the son of God. And that he commanded wealth and provision. When he sent his disciples and said, don't take any pest. Don't take any money. I'm in control of everything, every circumstance. He was demonstrating the power to get provisions and wealth for everything. So, you must begin to believe in the power to get wealth. And I believe that there is a power to get wealth in this mission. And when Lot followed Abraham, everything that Abraham was called to enjoy or to see, some fell on Lot. So, everything that is part of this mission is falling on you in Jesus' name. So, make sure you honor God with your tithe. And number two, you remember God. Remember God always. And your tithe, when you take that 10% out, it shows that you remember God. Yeah. Yeah. One day I met a brother and I asked him whether he's paying tithe. He said, Do you know what I earn? Do you know what I earn? He said, I earn dollars, dollars. I mean, a, a person living in Ghana. He said, I earn dollars. I said, remember God. Then, I was there when I heard that he had had an accident and his car had somersaulted and he fell into a deep hole. But he came out alive. When I saw him, I said, brother God, he said, no. Airbags. You see, he said, I have the latest airbags and other things. It delivered me. Yes. I'm, I'm not telling you stories of people I don't know. I'm talking of people talking to me. He said, I had the latest airbag. And it's true. His car was a modern car with airbags everywhere. And the airbags were deployed right here in Ghana. And he was inside. Wow. He saved. Still, he wouldn't pay tithes. And then one day he went to the doctor. And the doctor said, you have this disease, you are going to die. His stomach went. One day he came to me, before he died, he came to me with an envelope. He said, I want you to see that I'm paying tithes. Yes. I want you to see that I'm paying tithes. He he, he came to pay tithes. I said, I want you in particular because I want you to see that I have changed. Because when the disease took him up, his stomach couldn't hold all his trousers. Yes. He came, he said, look, all my special trousers I cannot wear. Expensive one. He, he mentioned the shop where he bought it. 
I've come to pay tithes so that you see that I have changed. Yes. You know, there are many things, eh? only God does it for us. Oh. But we say, oh, airbags, uh, my, uh, my school, my, uh, my, 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 my education is working for me. My strength is working for me. Yeah. There is nothing any human being can do about many things. One day a man came to see me. He said, when I go to the toilet, I feel that something is left in it. I feel that something is left. It, it, it hasn't come out. So when he went to the doctor and they look, they look inside, there it was, cancer. Yes. yes. That was his head. He was a cop, whatever, whatever. Yes. A young man. That was his end. He lay and faded out. That was it. There are many things, if God doesn't give you power, you won't be here. You won't be listening to me. You won't have even the chance to mock. Your mockery is because you have forgotten, or even it is not even, maybe you don't think deeply. Until now you are saying the things you are saying. Maybe you don't think deeply. Number three. Every time you tithe, you worship God. Worship is very important. Now, your tithing is very connected to worship. Amen. Amen. Look at Exodus. Chapter 12, verse 27. Let's see, 26 and 27. It says, That you shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. So you see, sacrifice and worship is together. Exodus chapter 32 and verse 8. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto. Worship and sacrifice. When you pay tithes, you make a sacrifice of at least 10% or more to God. It is also your worship. Wow. It's also your worship. Your worship is your sacrifice. You sacrifice what you worship. You yeah. sacrifice to what you worship. Yeah. You sacrifice to what you worship. What you worship, you sacrifice to it. So when they made the calf, they worship and they sacrifice to it. So when you bring your tithes and your offerings to God, you are worshipping God, you are sacrificing to the one you are worshipping. It's part of your worship to sacrifice. People don't realize that money is part of your worship. And that's why sometimes we hold our offering and we pray with it. Because it's part of our worship. When they made the calf, they worshipped it and sacrificed there unto. Exodus 32 verse 8. Are you there? Yes. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 3. And this man went up out of his city yearly. Eh? This is talking about, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hannah's husband. What is his name? Elkanah. Yes. He went up yearly to do what? To worship and to sacrifice. Worshipping 
is sacrificing. You sacrifice to what you are worshiping. It's, that is how you worship. So, so how do we worship? It's two slow songs. You know, we have like praises is three fast songs and worship is two slow songs. Where do you read it in the Bible? They sang two, slow, three slow songs and, and worship the Lord therewith. Praise and worship. Three slow songs, three fast songs. So three slow songs is our worship and the three fast songs are our praises. Worship team and praise team. <laughs> you worship God with your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Now, 2 Kings chapter 10. Now, verse 19. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, all his priests. Let none be wanting. For I have what? A great sacrifice to do to Baal. This is, Je- uh, um, what's his name? Jehu, um, the one who killed uh, Jezebel. Jehu, yeah. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it subtly to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. So the worshippers were to bring the sacrifice. And he wanted the worshippers to come with the sacrifice. And he had a great sacrifice. We are all worshipping and we are all sacrificing. If you don't sacrifice, it's not worship. I'm correcting your, your way of thinking about worship. Yes. Second Kings chapter 17. Verse 36. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and an outstretched arm, him shall you fear and him shall ye worship and to him shall ye do sacrifice. You worship and sacrifice to God. So the sacrifice you make of your money is your worship to God. So you cannot, you, there's no sacrifice to God. There's nobody who ever served God without sacrificing bulls, cows, goats, this. Solomon gave 1,000 burnt offerings to his credit. To his credit. 1,000. So when you see Christians lying, and I want to say, a lot of pastors are liars. Even bishops. And people who claim to be in the church, you don't pay tithes. You don't pay tithes. Pastors, I mean, uh, it's like pastors telling me that. Every time I watch somebody telling me a lie, I just look at the person in amazement. Because sometimes I know people are lying and I just allow them to lie. Because it's a way of just seeing who they really are. Just lying through their teeth. Wretched liar. And we, we wretchedly lie when it comes to tight and it comes to money. And you want to prosper. You know, when you look at our behavior, you can understand why we are not making it in a certain way. Because we are wretched liars and pretenders, hypocrites. How can I be preaching this if I myself don't pay tight? If I myself am stealing money from the church? If I take money that does not belong to me, how can I preach what I'm preaching? How can it lead to anything good? How, can, how does it help us? There is no fear of God. Without the fear of God, you will not pay tithes. The tithing level will be at least 70% more than it is if people feared, had any fear of God. That they really fear that it is God who brought me out. It's God who gave me this. It's God who has brought me to this place. If people fear God, they will pay their tithes. But they don't fear God. And that is why people lie and cheat. You know, maybe it's when we go back to the Shakespeare time, you can understand it. In Shakespeare's time, an actor was called a hypocrite. So they will say, oh, the hypocrisy hasn't started. That is the play. <laughs> hasn't started. The hypocrisy will start at three. Yes. Yes. And today we have only six hypocrites are in town. Two of the hypocrites are in a taxi coming. Yes. Our top hypocrite is uh, 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 Denzel Washington, or, or that's, how, that's what they will say. The top hypocrite is there, or, or what's Sylvester Stallone? He's a, one of the main hypocrites. <laughs> Jesus. 
deception has gone into acting. We act out our lives. You are watching, you don't pay tithes. Tithes, you pay tithes. You don't pay no tithes. You don't pay no tithes. You don't fear God. You don't know. You don't even believe. You don't pay no tithes. No small amount that you have. You are sitting there, you call yourself a pastor. You tell lies all the time. How will you not cheat? You tell lies. Things are not true. You, you say things that are not true. You say things that are not true. You have a money that nobody has. The money that you earn legally. That you are supposed to take some out. But you don't take out. It's only the fear of God that will control you to take the actual amount out. Only the fear of God. And you, already you don't fear God. Because the lies you tell, the hypocrisy, the different things, it proves that you don't fear God at all. I've seen it all around. All around. People don't fear. Say, honor your father. People don't fear it. Honor your father. People don't fear it. If they fear you, wouldn't even see certain people who are even who have even got into a certain rank doing certain things. Because it's as if they have not learned anything at all. At all. So I, I'm just saying, you know, we should we claim to be worshippers of God, but we are not. And there is no sacrifice that you genuinely make. It's not a sacrifice that you genuinely make. <laughs> you know, I've been, a, I've been a Christian for so many years, working in the, working in the church. <laughs> I've seen people giving, 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 different types of giving. If you want to ask me what characteristic I've noticed, I've noticed hypocrisy most goes with giving. Hypocrisy goes mostly with giving. Yes. Hypocrisy like pretense and acting. And people do not worship God with their money. And do not make genuine sacrifices. Yes. That's why you see the hypocrisy comes into money. It comes into sex. It comes into marriage. That's why many of the Christian marriages are just... A fake presentation on the outside. It's just to look good. But behind it is a dead man's bones. Bible says men walk on them and they are not aware. They are not what? Aware. That under is dead men with skulls looking up like that. Oh. And bones. Oh. You are looking at my face. Keep looking. Acts chapter 7. Saying unto Aaron, verse 40. Make us gods to go before us. Make us what? Gods. You think you are better than them? That's what they said. Make us gods with something else. We don't fear the almighty God who brought us to the river. It doesn't even make sense, but it's happening. As for this Moses. Now you are now calling him this Moses. Look at the name that you call me. Look at the names that you give to me when you are in private. Nobody can call Archbishop Nick in my presence. Archbishop Nick. I heard someone say, don't say that. No, don't say that. You are not real. You are not real. You are not real. As for this Moses. <laughs> Which brought us out of the land of Egypt. We wot not what has become of him. Now you have to think. The man who brought you out of Egypt. Do you not think he can take you somewhere further? Huh? Does it not occur to you that it's not yet over? Why the person is not dead? That there is still more coming? There's more ahead. Coming out of Egypt was just part one. There was more ahead. And they made a calf in those days and sacrificed unto the idol and worshiped in the works and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. You see, this is it. What you've done, what you've achieved, you worship it with it. You see, we are going to get to a place where in the ministry, and I, I don't care. 
I'm, I'm saying it. People are going to have money to pay for things in a big way. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. People are going to dissolve houses and say, take it. Yes. And support the work of God genuinely. You think people don't dissolve houses and give? People do it all the time. Think for the politics. People sell their houses to use for politics. The amount of money people are used, it's not that somebody told me, it's what I know practically. The huge amount that people are using NDC, NPP politics in Ghana, even to become presidential candidates, look at how much they have to pay. And they all know that they're acting a game, but they are doing it for a reason. They know what they, 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 know what they are getting from it. <laughs> The same Ghana, minimum of $20,000 to, to become a presidential candidate, plus all the other things, there was few, few posters that they will make. They know they will not win, but it's, it's just paper mache. They just play it. There's 42. Huh? Are you with me? And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the work of their own hands. And therefore, God gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Huh? God is saying that, is it me you worshipped? Is it me you are giving sacrifice to? You worship the hosts of heaven. The sacrifice you were doing, was it to me? He said in verse 43, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, Rephan, figures which you made to worship them and I will carry you be away beyond Babylon. Moloch was the one they were worshipping. So the one you sacrifice to, are you listening to, yeah. to me? The one you sacrifice, you can see in verse 42, the word worship the host of heaven and the sacrifices you made is the one you worship. Wow. So when I give my life to God, I'm worshiping God with my life. My life is a worship yeah. to God. Are you there or you are leaving? Yeah. I don't even mind if you leave. Number four, every time you tithe, you show respect for holy things. It's holy and special. Leviticus 27 verse 32, it says, And the tenth concerning the tithe of the head of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, eh? the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. The what? The tenth shall be holy. It's a special money. It's a special money you don't eat. If you earn $10,000, $1,000 is for the Lord. We don't eat it. Yeah. We don't calculate with it. We don't add it to any project. We don't use it for any calculation. It is the Lord's. We don't plan with it. When they tell you your salary is $10,000, it means your salary is $9,000. That's what it means. You cannot, and I'm teaching you this so that you will believe in God. You believe in God to prosper and see financial ascendancy. All these big, big words in the Bible, robbing God, curse, whatever, devourer, these big, big words, it's all connected to tithing. It's all connected to tithing. Prove me. So, it is holy money. It's what? Holy money. Holy money. Holy money. It is the Lord's money. The tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Special. Out of whatever the Lord blesses you with. If you remember and you fear God, it will be special to you. Then that's why your mouth cannot tell lies. Your body cannot act. You cannot be treacherous. You can all these things which only God sees. You see that your life starts to line up. Go and read Isaiah 59. It's about sins. Isaiah 59. Read it. You see what is it? Where it says, My hand is not shortened. He listens from beginning to end of Isaiah. I've never seen any chapter like that. When you read Isaiah a lot, you start to know the difference between the chapters. 
and 59 is about bad things. And a lot has to do with deceptions. Number five. When you pay tithes, you obey God. Every time you obey God. Deuteronomy 26, verse 14. I have not eaten thereof in my morning. Neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use. Nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God. And I've done all that thou hast commanded me. 26 Deuteronomy 26 is about tithing. Yes. I have done all that you have commanded me. Obedience. Now let me, let me just say something to you. You know when it comes to curses and and disobedience. Just always remember Deuteronomy 28. I'm sure you remember. That's what we read at weddings. You know, we always read Deuteronomy 28. These blessings will come upon you. Do you see? Mm -hmm. But then in verse 14 he says, Thou shall not go aside from any of the words which I command thee. And it shall come to pass that if thou will not hearken to the voice of the Lord to do all these commandments which I command thee, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Disobedience is the open door for curses. If you want to know what brought about a curse, is disobedience. If you want to know what has brought a curse, is disobedience. From verse 15 up to like 65 is curses. Disobedience is the master key to curses. And curses are wonderful experiences. Wonderful experiences. If I have a, a revival tonight, I would just talk about the wonders of a curse. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like talking. <laughs> yeah. The wonders of a case. Yes. I would like to talk about the wonders of a case. Yeah. Disobedience brings in all these negative things. Listen, you people, I, I've realized that we don't fear God. Fearing God has to do 90% where nobody sees you and 10% where people see you. Remember, we have a song. What is it called? God is going to judge you. What kind of woman are you going to be? God is going to judge you. God will judge you for the kind of woman that you are not the dressing that you come and pose in the church. Christian wife posing as angels. When you are far from an angel, far as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> That's quite far. <laughs> Yes. Are you listening? Yes. 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 You cannot continue to put, we have to be concerned about the 90% of our life that are hidden from view. That is where the fear of the Lord and all these things come in. It is where it's hidden from view. That is where your righteousness begins. That is where the breastplate of righteousness is put on. That is where the shield of faith and all the things in the world. Tithing is a private thing. Nobody, nobody even knows your account. It's a calculation. Who is there to observe and say, oh yeah, yeah, you paid your tithe. There's nobody. You had an increase for your salary years ago. You are paying 10% of years ago when you were, I mean, at a certain level. That is the 10% you pay. And you are just cool with it. It's not 10% anymore. But it's not a problem for you. You pay tithes when you were earning CDs, when you were earning Naira. Now you have euros, you have dollars, you have whatever. Now that you have huge amount, it's not, it's tithe is not possible. It's too much for the church. To put those trucks on the ship, almost 20,000 euros for one truck. One truck to get on that ship. 
Because it costs about 2000 for uh, for a car. How much more this? And where is it going? Money looks too big when it comes to the church. Money looks too big in your eyes. It's too big for a church. It's on to you. And God will also look at you and say, this is too big for this one. I will take it back. It's too big for him, too big for her. She cannot hold it. He cannot hold it. It's too big, too heavy. But you see, in these last days, God is going to raise up people who are going to be experienced financial ascendancy. And I'm telling you because I don't want money to destroy you. I'm teaching you to give freely. You'll be giving huge amounts. You'll be giving huge amounts. Yes. You even wonder at yourself that, hey, is it me? Is it me that is doing this? And you'll be freer with giving. When it comes to giving, you see that the amounts, you see, certain amounts giving. One time I look at, I look at a, 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 a um, beggar. I said, I, I don't want to give beggars small amounts. Oh, yes. Sometimes I give a beggar and I say, go. Don't come again, eh? For two weeks, I give him, go. Because they always come to me. They always come to me. They target me. As soon as they see me, they are on my car. (laughs) Yes. It's not only church members who call me daddy. Even beggars call me daddy. (laughs) Don't let yourself stay down in the dungeons of a certain class of thinking where you used to be down. When God is trying to change things. A fable, or they are trying to make you into what? A lady, a lady or a, a gentleman. A they are trying to make you into something. Into an Oula. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, they are making you into an Oula. <laughs> which means a gentleman. <laughs> an Oula. <laughs> Oula. Oula. Finances start by correcting things internally. Stop playing games with God. Stop fooling God. Why give God something that makes thoughts come to God? You think I'm a fool, eh? Well, the pastor there, he's a fool, but God is not a fool. The church is a fool if you like, doesn't know anything. But God is not a fool. You know wealth. You know wealth. I want to tell you a story, but I don't think I should tell you. (laughs) And the last point today, every time you tithe, you demonstrate faith in God. Faith in what? God. God. Prove me now. Now, why is your faith important? Look at Hebrews 11. And I want you to see, as we come to the end of this important um, session. Now, in Hebrews 11, verse 32, it says, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell to talk about Gideon. Mm, these are the heroes. And of Barak. Gideon had 80 children. And of Barak, these are our heroes. <laughs> and Samson. <laughs> and of Jephthah. Okay? And of David. Also. And of this, and of Samuel. You know, this tithing thing must move into the realm of faith. Amen. From the realm of principles, ideas, and facts. Okay. It must become something you believe. Yeah. He said, what shall I more say? What shall I more say? Talking about all these people. Verse 33. Beautiful. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Now, subduing kingdoms, you may say, maybe... You know, 
He used political science, communism, and so on to, huh? Facts what? Fascism. Fascism. And these other principles to win people, to subdue a kingdom. But the Bible says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. You are subduing kingdoms. You are subduing kingdoms. You are seeing great harvest financially, financial ascendancy through faith. They wrought righteousness. Obtained promises. Promises. Again, you may say, maybe you use the law, 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 to get your promises. Somebody who promises, you promise this, you promise this. But now we are coming to things you can't use principles. They stop the mouth of lions. Now, you see, if, if, if this, there's no principle that can stop a mouth of a lion, what principle will you use? If so, the principles of faith. When you meet the lion, you explain the principle. Look, lion, let me tell you. Step number one. Principle number two. Principle, as you are in the den, the lions on the left, lions on the right. Eh? Which, which, let's, let's sit and talk. We have a song called, let's sit and talk. Which principle are you going to use? The lions are, wow. Look, Encyclopedia Britannica. No, there is no encyclopedia you can use. It's the power released by faith. They stop the mouth of the lions that night. And lions eat in the night. You know it. They eat in the night and they sleep all day. And Daniel was put in the lions den in the night. In the morning, the, the, the king came and said, Oh, king, uh, Daniel, has the God whom you said been able to save you? Has he been able to save you? And Daniel said, the Lord, my God has saved me. I'm here. And they pulled him out. And then they brought the people who brought the accusation. And they put it. The Bible says they had not even reached the bottom of the pit. When the lions came and ate them and chewed all their bones. Which principles is controlling lions in the pit then? Please, I beg you. I beg you. Let your faith in tithing and your move out of the level of principles and facts and things that are true in the Bible to something that you believe. Look at it. Daniel 6. The king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and cast them into the den of the lions. Them with their children and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them. Kabara sataba. And break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. When they got to the bottom, as soon as they touched, they touched down. That was it. Wow. The children, the small ones, the wives, husbands, everybody was eating. Meanwhile, Daniel was alone the whole night. Huh? He was sitting there and all the long. Which principles? You see, you have to move away from principles to faith. Which facts? Which, which facts? So I know this verses. I know this. It must become something that you believe. Bible says, through faith, they stop the mouth of lion. You stop the mouth of the devourers of your wealth, of your houses, of your property, of whatever God has given to you. I'm telling you, through faith, you rise to a level financially. You live in England. You live in America. You live in Switzerland. And there's a certain level of financial ascendancy. But lions are swallowing it all up. You cannot, you cannot break out. Continue verse 34. Quench the violence of fire. Which motivational speech? Which, which idea? Huh? Which theory is going to work to... When they brought Daniel and his friends to the fire, during Mountain of the Lord last year, we had a fire. That made me fear fire. It's not a small thing. Which principles? You must get to the place where you believe that this 120 pounds is a holy 120 pounds. I believe with all my heart that it opens the windows of heaven. That it, does, it has this effect. You cannot steal from God. God doesn't even need them. He will never need you and he will never need your money if you don't know what I'm telling you. 
There is nothing that you can't you see the church works without your money. What do you contribute? What do you contribute? We don't ask you for 99% of the things that are going on. I don't mention them. And yet you continue to deceive God by presenting a small fraction of what really is your tithe. And a very small limited sacrifices. You don't really worship God with your sacrifice. It's true. And yet the church continues to flourish. We don't ask you for anything. It's time to turn around financially and learn it from today, from now. The way you can lie with your mouth is the same way you can steal money. It's the same way you will not pay tithe. The way you can commit fornication and adultery and still be moving as a normal person. It's the same way that you can steal and do every bad thing. If you don't know, I'm telling you. All these evils is a river. It's the same river. Straighten your life and come clear and have faith in that God is alive. And you can quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Weakness was made strong, wax valiant in fight, turn to flight armies, armies of aliens. By what? Faith. By having beliefs. Believe in God. You will never run dry. Bishop Oedipo said he was giving an offering to somebody and the person said, you will never, your hand will never run dry. Your hand will never run. And he said, he has, it has, that is it. So before it comes, it is there. It's waiting for you. And so it has been. It's supernatural. You are going to experience supernatural wealth and financial ascendancy. In the name of Jesus. Every standing. I I hope you are not cooking. I hope you are not cooking. Number seven, every time you tithe, you appreciate full-time ministry. Number eight, every time you tithe, you demonstrate belief in eternity. And number nine, every time you tithe, you obtain a blessing and avoid a curse. And every time you tithe, number ten, you demonstrate your knowledge of the source of your blessings. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for the blessing that you give to us. Thank you for every financial ascendancy that takes place. I pray especially for the young ones, Lord. They are going to, some are going to work in king's palaces. Some are going to be kings. Some are going to have gifts given to them, wealth. Some are going to be inheritors. Some are going to come into supernatural, unexplained graces. Marataso Mandali Mama. Father, let all forms of deception, all forms of wickedness be removed from our lives that we may live under you and serve you well. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Save us, O Lord, from crookedness. Crookedness. Deliver us, O God, from being silent thieves. Silent thieves. Makaro masandola mashandala bakabarandale babandalaba. We give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord, that you change our circumstances with your mighty power. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, I, I, I release. Oh, yes, I'll do it then, Lord. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. As every head is bound and every eye closed, if you are here today, you want to give your life to God, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I want to give my life to you. Please have mercy on me. Make me a new person. I love you, Jesus. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me.
for saving me and for touching my life. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you gave your life to Jesus, you see on the screen, text us, send us a WhatsApp. We will write back to you. We'll call you. We'll speak with you. I hope we are doing that. If you are lonely, please put a sign on the thing. If you are lonely, you need a friend, also text WhatsApp. If you are lonely and you need a friend, because one of the evils in the world, the first evil in the world was loneliness. It's the first evil. That's why God made uh, Eve. Eve was made to solve the first evil. The first funny thing in the world was loneliness. The first bad thing. You'll never be lonely anymore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thanks for your blessing. Thanks for your blessing. Lift your holy hands to Jesus right now. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now we want to receive our Holy Communion. I want to speak a blessing concerning finances in the communion. So take your Holy Communion right now. And we're going to do that. Take heed, this is my body. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this what? And remember. Again, remember. There's nothing like a church without the cross. There's nothing like a church without Jesus coming. There's nothing like a church without Jesus dying and giving his life. There's nothing like a church where we are having communion without the power of God what Jesus did for us. So this, this is to remind us of what God has done for us through his son Jesus. Father, we come before your throne and we thank you. We remember your goodness to us, Lord. We ask you as we receive your body, let your power and the remembrance come into our lives specially heal us of every plague as we receive we pray especially your word says that by his stripes we are healed it's in the old testament but we believe it lord for corona that is sweeping across many nations we pray for mercy for healing and protection the body of Jesus Christ in England, in America, in Switzerland, in Germany, in South Africa, Kenya, Madagascar, everywhere, in Ghana, we receive the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ. And now, the blood 
of Jesus. Whatever represents your mistake, may the blood of Jesus wash and may you receive healing, forgiveness, and blessing through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for financial ascendancy. Let it be released. Let all forms of corruption, wickedness be taken out of our midst forever. In Jesus' name. May you rise financially. May you be blessed financially. May you be among those that receive of the wealth to use for the kingdom of God. You'll never be in need. You'll never beg. You'll never not have what you need. And every meeting and decision and plan that is not in your favor is overturned today blessed financially receive the blessing receive the blessing receive the blessing a third time be a builder of houses be a giver of houses be a blessing and a giver of blessings in the name of Jesus Christ the savior of the world amen God bless you you may be seated take now your offering your tithes, everything you have everywhere we're going to pray specially over your special offering God is blessing you mightily Take your special time.